Hello everyone. So till now we have discussed about HTML and CSS. We have learned HTML basic tags, CSS types, different types of CSS and uh, make simple simple web pages using the HTML. Now the question is why should we create our website with WordPress over HTML? So today we are going to start WordPress. Before starting the WordPress, I'm going to explain you that why we should learn WordPress or why we should use WordPress to make our website. So let's see. So first of all, we will discuss WordPress versus HTML. So first of all, there are many differences between the WordPress and HTML. We will discuss some of them. So in WordPress, what happened? No coding skill is required. As you all see in the previous lectures of HTML that we have to uh, use tags, different types of tags like for image, I have to use IMG tag. Then for heading tags, we have H1 up to H6. So WordPress, in case of WordPress, we don't need any coding skill. With the help of just drag and drop options, we can make our website better. Second, in WordPress, it is easy to use. And uh, as I told, like it is a drag drop based features. So where in case of HTML, we have to write the codes or uh, error can be comes in our code. If uh, I write something wrong, so there is a problem in HTML, whereas it is not in the case of WordPress. Next, we have thousands of already created templates. See, templates are what like uh, templates are also, uh, you can say like already uh, designed. Like, uh, like uh, it will provide a layout of the website which are already here in the WordPress. But in HTML, you have to do everything from the scratch. Next, we have plugins options in the WordPress. Whereas for any type of uh, like extra features in HTML, you have to use CSS. So for making your website more attractive, more like powerful, you can say, or more attractive features or more user friendly, you have to use CSS in your HTML file. Next in WordPress, as you can see, uh, everything is easy in WordPress. So you can say it, it has a very poor learning curve. That means if one wants to learn to code. Whereas in HTML, a true coder always wants to create his own stuff. So it also gives a chance to stand different from the crowd. You can design whatever you like. So you can design according to your choice whereas uh, in wordpress some particular fix uh, like you can say themes are fixed in wordpress time to time maintenance might be needed whereas in html it requires very little maintenance because uh, till now i think you already understand that it's with the help of html we can only make static websites Next, we have in case of WordPress, cost of hosting the website is high, whereas in case of HTML, it is relatively very small. Or you can say it is very cheaper to maintain the website. WordPress SEO and security features are better than HTML, whereas in HTML, everything needs to add to the source code. Whatever you want to do, like if you want security features, then you have to add code for that in the HTML. WordPress, it is fast, whereas HTML, it is relatively slow as compared to WordPress, you can say. So these are the basic features or you can say basic differences between the WordPress and HTML. And you can say by looking all these facts or all the... Uh, differences one can understand that WordPress is certainly a good choice to go for and probably that is the reason so many websites are 
using it but that's not the truth like these are the features of wordpress but uh, it is up to the user that the main question is that one should ask uh, like oneself before making any website or uh, before making any choice of like wordpress and html that what are the requirements of user okay so now let's see what is wordpress actually wordpress is an online open source website creation tool written in php so with the wordpress you can create beautiful websites in a very small amount of time it is you can say the easiest and most powerful blogging website cms so here is a word that is cms which stands for content management system so let's discuss something about it cms what is cms so cms is a software which stores all the data like text photo music documents and is available on the website cms also helps in editing publishing and modifying the content of your website now wordpress is what you see is what you get so here you can see a small interface of wordpress we will see uh, after uh, uh, in coming sessions also so this is the image of wordpress post editor where you want to uh, do a post or you want to make a post for that this interface comes so here you can see by just clicking on these posts or media links you can add anything in your website and uh, here is also we have many tools like if you want to make your text bold or like alignment so everything is there now after discussing the basic of like why we make websites using the wordpress over the html we have a question that we have one is the wordpress.com and another one is wordpress.org so what is the difference between these two so first of all let me show you the interface of these two like so in browser i have opened already that wordpress.com and one is wordpress.org so let me tell you little about these two so first of all we have wordpress.com so it is one specific implementation of the wordpress.org that means you can say wordpress.com helps you to build the wordpress site but you don't get access to the same level of flexibility that you get when you use so here is the wordpress.com with the help of this site you can make websites of wordpress like here you can see the link of start your website so here provides many type of templates so it is a site which offers or you can make your wordpress website with the help of this wordpress.com okay so it is a paid website these are the plans of uh, this website offers so one is this that is wordpress.com and second is the wordpress org so our main task is with this that is the wordpress.org why it is a free non profit open source wordpress software that you can install and use to build any type of website so it is also called self hosted website so with the help of this wordpress.org you can make your own websites see here you can see that beautiful designs powerful features and freedom to build anything you want so wordpress is both free and priceless at the same time uh, in this particular site that is wordpress.org uh, we have some features of wordpress so let's discuss about these features so first one is a customizable design that you can make your design with the help of your choice you can make any type of designs of your choice with the help of wordpress it is seo friendly that is seo stands for search engine optimization so that means you can use 
this feature with the WordPress. Then we have responsive mobile sites. So responsive means that uh, the interface of your website is same. It looks same in mobile, in tablet or in your PC. Performance wise, it is very good. Manage on the go. That means you can easily just install the WordPress, just drag and drop the features that insert the content and simply your site is ready. Security wise, it is very good. High security, it features then powerful media management so media means like images audios videos if you want to add that in your website that can be very easy in case of wordpress last is the easy and accessible so it is very easy to use wordpress as no coding skills are required for this so you just remember one thing that you have to use wordpress.org for like downloading the WordPress or making any your website because WordPress.com just offers the packages by which you can make your site online. So your work is with this WordPress.org. So here is a link that gets started with WordPress. You can download your WordPress from here also. Okay. So now next move to the slide. So here's the wordpress.com and wordpress.org. So here are some features that uh, I already like discussed like wordpress.com. It is free to like this amount. Then for org, we have to pay this for a year. It is hosted by wordpress. Jabki like uh, org that is wordpress.org is hosted by you. Because uh, by this we can download wordpress on your machine and use wordpress according to our choice free subdomain here we have to use custom domain name no maintenance is required in wordpress.com where as in case of wordpress.org maintained by you customization is limited in wordpress.com whereas it is fully customizable that is wordpress.org is fully customizable so according to your choice you can make changes to your website so e-commerce with top plan here e-commerce also supported single site only multi-site capability so with the help of this you can make multiple sites so great for new bloggers or for online resumes and it is perfect for serious bloggers and businesses so here is the difference of that wordpress.com versus wordpress.org thank you Hello everyone, so in this particular session, I am going to explain how to install brackets on your machine. So, let's see the steps. So first of all, I have already downloaded brackets on my machine. Here is the software. Just double click on it and it will start installing on your machine. So, first of all, it will ask for the location where you want to install this particular software. I have chosen the C program files and the brackets. Then you see, simply click the next button and simply just click on install. It will simply ask you to just install this software on your machine. Just click yes. So it is secure for your system. It will not harm full for your machine in any way. So it will take some time to install according to the configuration of your machine. Like it is installing in my machine. With the help of brackets, you can run any type of code like HTML code or if you want to make PHP files, then you can also use brackets for that purpose also. So bracket is very useful that uh, in case of simple notepad or notepad++, you first have to write the code, 
then save the code in the HTML extension. And for running that, you have to open the browser and then run the particular file. But in case of brackets, you can find an option of live preview in the interface of brackets. So let's see, first uh, just uh, get installed it in your machine and let's check how it looks. So it is successfully installed in my machine. So let's try to run this. Just simply search for brackets and run it. So here is the interface of brackets. So here sometimes you get uh, some warnings like this is not in a format. So no need to get worry about it. Just simply what happened. For running HTML files, what you have to do, make a folder. There, like uh, I have make a folder of HTML programs in my D drive. In D, I have a folder that is HTML programs in which I have saved all HTML files. Just select this folder. Now, by clicking a simple file from here, like I am just selecting a file. To increase the size of font, just simply use Ctrl plus plus. With the help of that, the size of text is going to increase. Here is the live preview link. Just click on it and you will directly see the preview of this file. So here is the preview of this file. So by this way, you can work in brackets. Most of the time you get an error like select the folder, select the file. So for that, the solution is make a folder in any drive and select that folder and all of your files of HTML and save in that particular folder. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to this interesting session where I will explain you the step by step process to install XAM. So now the world of web development could not have been what it is without this XAM. It is one bundle of a web server application, database and scripting language. So before we move to the installation step, let's first understand what exactly is XAM. So XAM. XAM stands for cross-platform, A stands for Apache server, M stands for MySQL, P stands for PHP. And again, P is Perl programming language. So, here is the interface of XAMPP. XAMPP is one of the best Apache distribution that helps web developers create a local web server for testing and deployment purpose. So, it was designed to be one of the easiest ways to install and run a development server and you can say it is the most complete package. So it is an interface of them after installation will look like that. So now how to install XAMPP on your Windows machine. So first of all you have to go to Google and type XAMPP download. Then the first link that is the apachefriends.org. From here you can download XAMPP. Otherwise I already provide the software to you and share the link on the Moodle. After this, this particular window will open. Here it will ask that you want XAMPP for Windows, for Linux or for Mac. So from here you can download for the Windows. Then these are all steps. I will show you each and every step practically. So after downloading, when you double click on XAMPP, it will start like this. Then simply click on next, next. It will ask you for the location, then the language. And at last, after some wait, it will install XAMPP on your machine. At last, you will see this particular window that completing the XAMPP setup wizard. Now, 
after installation xamp will look like this so when you install install xamp on your machine and just double click on it it will show like this and you have to sp sp start this apache and mysql as for making websites we need a server and a database for database we use mysql and for server we use apache sometimes on your machine it will give a warning but you can ignore that particular warning also now for checking like go to your browser and search for localhost to check that your xamp is running or no so by typing localhost you will see simply this window so by this way you can check that xamp is successfully installed on your machine now from here you can open php my admin also like here is the link that if you want to open php my admin then click on this particular button and you will get this php my admin before understanding that installation of wordpress on uh, xamp let me show you the steps of installation of xamp so on my machine i already have a software of xamp just double click on it it will simply ask that you will you want to allow this app to make changes so no worry about this just simply click on yes it will take some time So see, it seems you have an antivirus running. So here it is showing a warning. So don't worry about it. Just simply click on yes. Again, a warning is there. So don't worry. Just click OK. And it will simply start the process of installation of XAMPP. Just click on next. All the features if you want, then click on next. The location that is C, XAMPP folder, next just language next next and simply next it will start the installation process it will take some time to install xamp on your machine so you can see all the steps which i have pasted in the presentation are going on so now here comes the last step that is the completing the zam setup is on so it is asking me about the do you want to start the control panel now so just finish it it will open the zam control panel so here is the control panel just simply start apache and simply start mysql see on my machine it is giving a error for apache why actually in my machine i already using a server with a dot net so on same port number two server can't be possible by default the port number is 80 so for changing the port number for my exam server i just have to go to config select apache httpd.config file just search for listen l-i-s-t-e-n in this file here is the lesson so by default the port number is 80 but i am going to change it as on 80 port i have already running dot net so just save this file now try to first stop it and try to start start my sql 
now you can see it is functioning properly here you can see the port number also that is 8080 is the port number so if in your machine you don't have any server already then here it will display so it is the process of installation of XAMPP server okay so for checking that XAMPP is working properly or not on your browser just simply write http colon double slash localhost you have to write 8080 for that so when you click on it like localhost i'll just type localhost colon 8080 enter so it will show me the xamp apache uh, server or you can say it is a dashboard and by this window you can take this that XAMPP is successfully installed on your machine there is the link for PHP my admin by this you can go to PHP my admin so this is the installation process of XAMPP on your windows machine thank you now let's see how to install WordPress on XAMPP for that what you have to do exactly uh, we don't install WordPress on our machine we simply just copy the folder of WordPress in the htdocs folder of XAMPP so where you will find that folder in the path of XAMPP where you install XAMPP in your machine you will find a folder that is htdocs here you have to make a folder name for WordPress like in this case I have make a folder named this site then for accessing this folder if you want to access this folder you have to write HTTP localhost then 8080 and the name of this site that is test site then here is the htdocs folder in this I make a folder named test site and I just pasted the WordPress files so here it is so the rest activities let me show you practically so here is the wordpress i have already already downloaded it on my machine just simply open this folder just copy this folder copy the content of this folders then simply go to c drive here you will find zap you will find htdocs folder just make a new folder name test site and simply paste the wordpress contents okay so now we already have xamp is running what is the xamp so now for uh, using the wordpress i have to make a database and for that i have to go to php my admin for that, I'll just simply click as my XAMPP. Just click on this admin part. It will open the PHP My Admin. But see, in this case, it is giving an error that is HTTP error 404. Why? Just because we have changed the fourth number. So you have to write 8080 here. Then it will open PHP My Admin. Then go here click on the databases name the database like i am writing test site just click on create so it will create a folder see let me show you the presentation also side by side so here is the click here is the link of databases i'll just click on it name the database that is test site simply click create now on the browser i have to write localhost name of the folder here the folder name is test site just simply press enter see now the window comes here so it is the uh, window of wordpress installation let me show you in the presentation i have also included this window so it will showing this after this it will ask about the database name, username and the password. 
so let's go to the browser simply click english continue it will ask for these things let's go just database name is test site username is root type root here password is blank and click submit so now what it is saying run the installation just click on it it will install wordpress on your machine okay so now after the installation it is asking for another information so now to complete the process of wordpress you have to give this details like write the name of site that is i am writing my first site username any like i am writing admin again password you choose you can choose with your choice confirm password email address any and just click on install wordpress so it will take some time so it's just a warning regarding your password just click on okay now it is asking me about the login just i am giving the admin password and admin username just click on login now it will take me to the dashboard of wordpress again it is giving a warning of like your vast password is weak like chrome found the password you just used in a data breach we recommend to change the password so it's just a warning so by this way you can see the dashboard of wordpress thank you hello everyone so in the last session we have installed wordpress on our machine and uh, i have shown you the interface of wordpress dashboard so now let's discuss something about wordpress dashboard so it is the first screen which will be seen when you log in into the administration area of your blog which will be display the overview of your website you can say that is a collection of gadgets that provide information and provide an overview of what's happening with your blog or your website you can customize your needs by using some quick links such as writing quick draft replying to the latest comment etc now dashboard can be so it is the interface of dashboard dashboard can be categorized as shown here each of these categories we will discuss one by one so here is the dashboard menu at a glance here is the activity part these are the wordpress news here is quick draft here is the welcome page and here you can find screen options so let me tell you these one by one so first of all we have dashboard menu the wordpress dashboard provides navigation menus that contains some menus like post media library pages comments plugins tools settings on the left side screen options where is the screen option here is the screen option so it will contain different types of wizards which can contain or which can be shown or hidden on some screens it contains check boxes to show or hide screen options and also allow us to customize sections on the admin screen next we have welcome area it includes the customize your site button by which allows you to customizing your wordpress theme next we have quick draft so it is a mini post editor which allows writing saving and publishing a post from admin dashboard it includes the title of the draft some notes about the draft and save it as a draft next we have wordpress news 
So this wizard displays the latest news such as latest software versions, updates, alerts, news regarding the software, etc. from the official WordPress blog. Last not least, there is a part of activity. This wizard includes latest comments on your blog, decent post and recently published post. It allows you to approve, disapprove, reply, edit or delete a comment. It also allows you to move a comment to spam. If you think you don't need a comment on your blog, you can move that particular comment to spam. Next, another part is there that is at a glance. In this section, this gives an overview of your blog post, number of published posts and the pages, number of comments. When you click on these links, you will be taken to the respective screen. It displays the current version of the running WordPress along with the currently running theme on the site. So this is the part which we have discussed. So here is the dis dashboard. The first we have the dashboard menus are there, screen options are there, see quick draft is there, WordPress events news is here, at a glance is here, activities are here. So these are the various parts of your WordPress dashboard. Thank you. Hello everyone. Till now we have discussed the introduction of WordPress and the last session was about WordPress dashboard. So now I think as uh, all of you are now familiar with the dashboard of WordPress. So now let's discuss how to create a WordPress category. First of all, let me show you the dashboard. So here is the dashboard which uh, we have seen in the last session. So now we are going to discuss about these things that what are post, how to add post, how to add media, what is the difference between pages and post, comments and these one by one. Okay. So now let's first start how to create a WordPress category. So first of all, category is used to indicate sections of your site and group related post. It sorts the group content into different sections. It is a very convenient way to organize the post. So now in this particular session, we are going to discuss how to add a category, how to edit suppose you want to change a particular category then how to do that then how to delete a particular category if you want to arrange the categories like you want to change the sequence of categories then how to do that so we will discuss all this in this particular session so first of all we have how to add category See, first you have to log into WordPress dashboard by just entering the username and password which you have provided at the time of installation of WordPress. As in my case, I have provided it admin as a username and admin as a password. Next, the dashboard window is shown like this. For adding post, you have to click this part. On the left side, you have a post part. In this we have categories option in the WordPress. Now next option what is going on like uh, it will show the categories page like this. So here you can see we have how to uh, like uh, the name that is had new category then the name of category then we have slug then we have parent we have description. So let me explain you these headings one by one. So first of all we have name. Name. Here is the name. So you have to enter the unique name of the category. Then slug. Slug a word chosen to describe your post. Like if you want to, uh, if you are posting about the web development then just uh, write here web development or if you are posting about SEO just write a SEO. So you can say a word will describe your post. Next we have parent. 
so in this category by selecting the parent category from drop down you can set the particular category as sub category like if you want a uh, main category and under that you want to make sub categories for that purpose we use this parent option now after filling all this information uh, sorry sorry one is left that is description so description is like add a brief description of your category so it is optional if you want to provide it then it's okay otherwise you can leave it blank now after filling all the information about categories click this button that is add new category next so these are the entries which i have told you like name slug a word chosen to describe your post parent description so now after filling all the information about categories just click on add new category button so now when you click on that you will see a category is shown here on the right side so the new category created will be displayed on the right side okay so here is the way by which you can create a category in the wordpress so let me show you the demo about this so here is the dashboard just click on post now click on categories here you have to provide category name suppose i am writing category 1 then slug simply write web design parent in case none just click on add new category so you can see here i am showing that category 1 is added in and slug is web design so by default a uh, category is created that is uncategorized but now we have category 1 which i have created with the help of add new category fine so now let's see how to edit category it is very easy uh, in wordpress that how to add category for opening the categories you have to go by post categories then the cursor uh, will show the edit and quick edit button see let me show you here you can see when you just take the cursor over here you see the edit category quick edit category delete and view okay so let me show the difference between these so first of all edit option is there so by edit what will happen it will show in this way that name slug parent and description which option you want to change that thus change that option and update it so by quick edit what will happen there is the quick edit option so by quick edit option it will show the details of category here on the right side like you can see in this window a particular window or a new window is open whereas in case of uh, quick edit you can see the details are showing here okay so after updating the category you can click on update category for updating the details next you can simply see how to delete a category here where you are finding the link that is added quick edit here is the delete category link just simply click on this link and this particular category will be deleted before deleting this category you will get a pop up message like it will ask you for the confirmation of deleting the particular category like this one so now next is the arrange categories so as i explained that you can arrange the categories in wordpress for that what you have to do you will get this option in the post and here is the category order when you click on it in the following screen you can see that create category section are not in order like here you can see uncategorized category 1 category 2 okay so if you want to uh, arrange these categories just <clears throat> sorry just click on order categories 
so you can rearrange your categories by just dragging in like you can just simply drag it up to above and drag it down and at last you have to just click on order categories so let me first show you the practical of this so here is the category by here editing like this window is come with edit option So now if you want to quick add it, it will ask you the information to be changed here. Okay. Suppose this. Then click on update category. It is updated. Now delete option is there here. If you want to delete it, it will permanently delete from the site. So it is asking for your permission. Okay. And the last option that is the categories okay and if you want to view this category so you can see how this page looks as no information is there that's why it is showing the default part. okay so view will uh, show you this particular category on the browser okay Thank you. Hello everyone. So in today's session, we are going to discuss about WordPress post. So before discussing about it, let's understand what is a post in WordPress. So posts are also known as articles and sometimes it is known as or it is referred as blog or blog post. So these are used to popularize your blogs. So now let's see. These are the contents or you can say we will learn in this session about the how to add post in your WordPress website, how to edit a particular post if you want to make any changes, how to delete a post, suppose if you post something wrong then you want to delete and by simply deleting how to delete that post in WordPress we will see that then see the preview of post and it last publish the post so here is the difference at uh, between preview and post is preview and publish is that in preview it will show a preview on the browser whereas it publish will show the content will publish on your wordpress website so now first we have add post so how to add post in your wordpress website so for everything you want to do with your WordPress website you first have to log in in your WordPress dashboard with your login ID and password so here you have to write login ID then password and then click on login next you will see the dashboard of the WordPress so here is the dashboard on the left side you will see a post link click the post link and you will see add new in the WordPress to add a post in the WordPress then you will get the editor page of the post like showing in this particular picture so you can use the WordPress that is what you see is what you get editor to add the actual content of your post so here is the name of the new post then here is the content here is the publish button and is the preview button also you can see various settings related to font like bold italic underline different styles colors are present here next so following are the fields on the editor page of the add post so first is the post title that is title of the post then the content of the post is denoted by post content so these two are the main headings which are point or which are found in your particular add new post page. Then first you have to enter a title here under the add new post you have to enter the title of the page. This will display on the top of your post. Next once you have entered your information in the post then click the publish button 
You can also click save draft to save your work without publishing the post publicly. Okay, so you can use this option also to save this page. Otherwise, if you want to publish this, for that you have to use this option, publish. So now, let me explain some options related to this particular page. This is this page. So these are, first of all, we have save draft option. It will save the post as a draft. Preview, you can preview your post before publishing. Move to trash, it will delete the post. Status, it will change the status of your post, publish, pending or review your draft. Visibility, visibility is like whom you want to show your page. You want it public, private or password protected. Then we have published change the published post day and time so if you want to change the publication or post like whatever the post is the date and time of that post for that you have to use published next we have edit post so now how to edit a particular post for that we simply have a edit link so let me first explain that how to add the post in wordpress which we have so next we have how to edit post in wordpress so for that you have to just click on post and click on all post from here in the wordpress after that you will simply get a link of edit quick edit trash and view under the post category where you have your post name under that you get other categories like edit quick edit trash and view from these links you can edit your post you can quick edit your post or you can simply delete this post by this trash menu and the view link so here is the link simply if you want to edit the post then it will open a new window and by this window you can make changes to your post after making changes to the post just update it in the quick edit window uh, as in previous session we have seen about the category part so same way it will also edit the post by this way but uh, here you will get some links you will get some links like title slug and date of the post can also be select the category for the post here if you want to change it after make changes simply update this next we have delete post as i told like we have a link of trash under the post so by this you can simply delete this post by the view link you can view your post on the browser so you can view your post list to confirm if the above post is deleted or not so if i am saying by clicking the post you can see the particular post that is post one has been deleted next is wordpress preview post so if you want to see the preview for that we have a link under the post just click on the all post category and by this view link you can simply get the preview of your particular post otherwise you can see the preview by here also okay when you click on edit while editing you will get a link of preview and publish here so publish it about like preview will show that how this particular post will see but publish means that it will post on the browser on your particular website so here is the view or preview link by this way you can see that you have make any changes if you make any changes to your post then it will reflect here in the case of publish post you have to go post if you want to add new in wordpress then see here you can add new post by adding new post link then by clicking on this publish button we can publish this post on the 
वेबसाइट थैंक यू